All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take customer information from your WordPress website and automatically send that information into your database, whether that database be LeadBrain, which is just a database, a CRM built off of Go High Level, or if it's something else like maybe the customer factor or maybe just a Google Sheets or something that you use to sort of track your leads and, and inbound customer information. Now, I'm gonna keep this general. There are some fundamentals in this video that if, even if you're not using Lead Brain, the customer factor, Go High Level, or Google Sheets, you should watch this because the fundamentals are gonna to apply to whether you're using, you know, FormWise, uh, JotForm, you name it, th th these fundamentals are gonna apply and you're gonna to wanna to understand how to do this because it's gonna help you and your business succeed. So without further ado, the problem we're trying to solve, we're trying to take information that somebody submits on our website and automatically put it into our customer database. So oftentimes, businesses go out to marketing companies, have them build these beautiful WordPress websites and they're there for their clients to find them on the internet, their clients find them, they got get on the page, they submit a web form, and then crickets, nothing happens. So maybe the team gets notified via email that you have a new lead, but if it's after hours or on the weekends, nobody really responds to them, or if you're busy, you kind of just let it get lost in the inbox, and then it's just a missed opportunity. So that's the worst case scenario, um, but it's actually pretty common uh, from what we see with our, with our clients. So. We're just trying to take the information from the website, send it into our database and do so automatically. Um, what problems are we trying to solve here? So we're trying to prevent manual entry from your email address into the business's CRM or database or sheet or whatever it is. We're trying to prevent like manual reminders and manual actions. One, because they take a lot of time. They take a lot of valuable time for, from people, whether it's you, the business owner, your secretary, your mom, whatever it is. It's time that can be spent focusing on something else in the business that's probably more revenue, uh, more revenue generating. It also comes with terrible response times. On average, it takes 61 hours for a company to respond to their leads. Now, I'll tell you, as a millennial, that's unacceptable. We expect people to respond to us within the first five minutes. Uh, and that may seem selfish, but it's the reality. It doesn't matter. Gen Z is not getting any better. And if you're in the home services business, you're serving the majority of your database, the majority of your service area is probably millennials. And you know, you're know you gonna have to get to them sooner rather than later. If you make them wait 61 hours, you can almost guarantee that they're calling your competitor and your competitor is gonna answer that phone and take that opportunity that you would have had and they're gonna capitalize on it. So another thing it leads to is impersonal responses. So because you just have this canned response, you're not able to do anything with the data. You're not able to activate some sort of AI or uh, some more information that you have in your database about your company and kind of get real personalized with that data, which leads to higher conversions down the road. This video is not about nurturing or lead capture or lead qualification. It's simply teaching you how to get your information that's on your website into your database automatically so that you can save time and be more organized. Uh, and the last thing is, if you don't have this in place, you're gonna miss opportunities. And that's by far the worst thing that can happen. And I'm gonna tell you why. Some of you companies, especially small businesses, pay a lot of money to market. You guys have different marketing channels, Facebook, Google, TV ads, uh, you name it, radio, all these things. You're paying thousands and thousands of dollars and you're forcing people to your website. You're forcing people to Google you and look you up. And then when they get to your website, they submit a form and then nothing happens. That's the worst thing in the world. You're setting money on fire when you do that. So the first problem we need to solve is we need to get that information into a database. I'm going to show you how to do that in here. So what's the solution? We're gonna leverage automation. We're gonna leverage something called webhooks, right? If you don't know what a webhook is, write that down. I'm gonna teach you a little bit about it, but this isn't a video on how webhooks work. But imagine a webhook is the same as like an envelope, right? Where if you wanted to send your mother a Mother's Day card, you'd fill out a card, you'd put it in an envelope, and then you'd send it to her address, and she'd get that information, that message from you. Well, it's a similar concept. On a website, you have a form, a client's gonna fill out that form, that website's gonna package it all up, and it's gonna send it to a destination, and that destination is your database with all that information in it, and once your database gets it, we're gonna map those fields and create a contact, right? That's what we're gonna do in this, in this video. So a lot of things can be done with that information, but we're gonna keep it really simple. What are the benefits? It's gonna save you time. Because if you have to manually go through your inbox and automatically, you know, and manually add these into your CRM, 
going to take a lot of time or it's going to take your secretary a lot of time. It's also going to reduce mistakes. You're going to get accurate information. You're going to get exactly what the customer input in that form into your website. No typos, no errors, no going back and digging through the inbox and try to figure out why this phone number doesn't work, so on and so forth. That's going to save you time, save you money, and increase the customer experience, which is probably the most important piece here, the customer experience. And you're going to be able to instantly engage with leads. So this isn't a video on lead capture, lead qualification, lead nurture. It's not a video on that, but you're going to see sort of the possibilities once you have that information inside of your CRM, what you can do with that information. And within lead brain, we can do multiple things like send text messages, kick off nurture sequences, start lead qualification, whatever it is, we can do that within our CRM and your CRM probably has the same functionality. And so you just need to get that information in there somehow. And then you're going to miss less opportunities because we're hitting these people up. We're leveraging automation to contact these people within the first five minutes. They're not going to go to your competitor because they're already chatting with you. They have no reason to go look elsewhere. So in this case, I'm going to show you how to do this with WordPress Elementor forms. If WordPress Elementor forms mean nothing to you, that's okay. Uh, still follow along. If you have a webmaster or a marketing company that you paid to put your website together, or somebody who makes modifications to your website, if you send them this video, they're going to know what to do with it. Or if you mention, hey, I want to webhook information into my CRM, they should know what, what to do. And if they don't, just comment down below. I read the comments, uh, and I could chat and help you guys out. Now, in this case, we're going to use LeadBrain CRM, which is my CRM that I've built, and it's built on top of Go High Level, if you're familiar. But this same thing can be done with many things, like JotForm, FormWise, Electronic Waiver, FormStack, Google Forms, Cognito Forms, GoDaddy Squarespace, and the list goes on. You can do this with most of them. And if they don't have some sort of webhook function, which most of them, if not all of them, do, then they probably have an application inside of Zapier. And I'm going to show that at the end. So if you don't use LeadBrain or Go High Level, stick around to the end because I'm going to show you how you can do this same thing with an application called Zapier. And it's relatively cheap to do. I highly recommend it. Um, and I'll kind of show you what, what goes on there. But pay attention to the fundamentals, website, webhook, and destination, whether that's a CRM, Zapier, or um, a, a Google Form, or, or a Google Sheet, whatever it is. Just pay attention to the fundamentals because they'll apply to you. Here's a quick visual. Website lead gets packaged up, automatically gets brought into a webhook and sent off to your database. And then your database will store that information. So without further ado, let's get into it. Um, first thing we're going to do is we are here inside of LeadBrain. If this interface looks familiar to you, then you're good to go. You can follow this verbatim, but if it doesn't, just continue to watch to the end because I'll show you sort of a more universal solution, which is the Zapier solution. So we're going to go into automation here and we're going to create a workflow. And we're going to start from scratch. We're going to name this demo webhook. We're going to add a trigger here. Inbound webhook. And here is your address, right? So let's copy this. This is the destination. This is similar to you sending that Mother's Day card to your mom. Consider this her, her, her home address, right? So we're going to copy this. I'm going to show you where this becomes important here in a second. But that's all we need to do right here for now. Now we'll go into Elementor. So let me go all the way back out so you can see the WordPress interface because this may not look familiar to you and that's okay. But if I show you the last interface, it might look familiar to you. And this is just a demo website here. Um, your website's gonna look different, obviously. But let's see if this loads. I might have to refresh it. Let me pause this video while I get this to load. All right, we're back. I had a little internet problem, but so this is the WordPress dashboard. If you're familiar with this, great. You'll know exactly what to do, but if you're unfamiliar with this, again, reach out to your webmaster, um, or if, you're, if your site is hosted on GoDaddy or Squarespace and you go to their help documentation and search for webhooks, you'll be able to sort of figure it out. If not, comment down below and I'll help you. But essentially, this is the website. I have a form on this website, so we're gonna need to edit our settings to tell our website anytime this form is submitted, send this information to LeadBrain using a webhook. So let's go ahead and do that. Click on Pages, and that form is on our home page. We're gonna click Edit with Elementor. And then we are gonna click on our form. So once we click on our form, we see the form settings pop up here. First thing we wanna do is expand this actions after submit. 
So here's sort of the standard, right? You have two actions after submission. One is collect submissions, and the second one is email. The first one, all it does is it collects this, the submissions inside of an internal database in WordPress, which uh, is kind of necessary, but also kind of useless because no small business manages their leads outside of WordPress, at least I hope not. Uh, but it's always good to have there, you know, there's a, there's a separate menu inside of the WordPress dashboard where you can go and see prior submissions for forms. Now, the second one and the most common one is email. So whenever somebody submits this, an email is generated with the information that the customer put in here and it's sent to you, and then it's just kind of on you to figure out what to do with it, right? But we wanna change that. We wanna leave the email, we wanna leave the collect submissions, but we're gonna add what's called a webhook. So if you click this plus icon here, scroll down to webhook, click that, and then you should see a little setting right here, webhook, that just came up. So let's go ahead and expand that. And it's asking us for our webhook URL. Well, that's what we copied earlier. If you remember here from our trigger, we had this webhook URL. We'll come in here and we will simply paste that in there. Once that's done, we can go ahead and publish this. And let's go ahead and send some test data here. So let's call this test data. Well, that was an address. Let's say one, two, three, main street, name test data phone number. I'm just going to make up a phone number. Do not harass this person, whoever it is. I don't know whose phone number that is. It's not mine, so don't harass them. All right, so we're going to go ahead and submit this form. Looks like our form was submitted, so we're going to come back here and we're going to click fetch examples. I'm going to move myself out of the way here. Fetch examples. And there you go. There it is. So it popped in. It's instantly. Uh, it, it, it does it instantly. The internet's great. So we'll come in here and we'll scroll up and we see what happened, right? So the website took all that information plus more, more. We don't care about the rest of the stuff, but the top, what, four fields we really care about, right? The website packaged it up. It sent it over to that address. And here we go. We have it now inside of our CRM, inside of our database. We can do whatever we want with it. We're just going to create a contact first. That, that's all we're going to do. Uh, but we have the address, the name that we put in, the phone number, and the email address. Great. So go ahead and click save. And now it's going to ask us to create a contact. So we're going to use that information from that webhook to create a contact. So let's add a field here. We know we have their name. Let's call it full name. Oh, clicked away. So we are going to add their name. And then you click this little tag right here to go to the custom values. You have inbound webhook trigger. Click that. And then name is the section that we want to map it to. All we're doing is mapping the fields. We're taking, let me save this here, just to remind you. Oh, it's, it's asking for a phone number. So I'll show you what we, what we mean by it. But let's go ahead and add the email. So email, and then we want to map the field to the email field. Then we're going to add phone number. We are going to map phone number. And then we had the address. So let's go ahead and just knock that out. Inbound webhook, address, save. Cool. Don't forget to save up top. Now, if you come in here, right here, all I was doing was mapping the fields. So I was, for my CRM, we have standard fields, name, email, phone number, address. We're just taking our standard fields and mapping them to the data that we just got from our website. And those are address, name, phone, and email. So perfect, that's all we wanted to do. Let's save that. And then let's not forget to publish this. So let's publish this so that it's live because if not, it won't work. So let's come back here and let's submit a new form, this time for real. So before we were just sending that data so that we can catch it so we had those fields to map, but we weren't actually saving any of that data. So now we're going to create a contact. So let's go ahead and call this, uh, let's see, 321 Main Street. And let's say, let's call it Dummy Data as their name. Their phone number is going to be a made up phone number please don't bother this person and their email is going to be dummy data at example.com we're going to submit this and let's see what happens so if we come in here and go to execution logs we see dummy data so that's good let's see what that contact looks like So here we go. Um, we had that workflow, accept the inbound webhook and create a contact using that data. We see we have the first name, last name. We have the email address that we put in. And then if we come down here, we have the address, right? 321 Main Street. So awesome, mission accomplished. That's all we wanted to do. Now, 
I'm going to show you how this can get super powerful, but I'm not going to go too deep into it. But if you come in here and you add actions after you create a contact, well, what if you want to send them a text message? Well, in Lead Brain, you can send them a text message. What if you wanted to send them an email? Well, send them an email. What if you wanted to notify your team internally? You can notify your team internally. You can put them on a trip campaign. You can activate a chat bot. You can do whatever you want in here. The options are literally limitless. Um, but again, this video is just to show you how to automatically put them inside your database. So hopefully that makes sense. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Zapier and I'm going to show you if you don't use LeadBrain or you don't use Go High Level, you just use something like, say, the customer factor. I'm going to show you how you can use an application like Zapier to do the same thing. So we'll come over here. Uh, this is a demo account. So we'll go ahead and create a new Zap. If you're not familiar with Zapier, there's a ton of content out there about Zapier. I'll put a link below in the bio for, for the Zapier website. But you'll come in here and you'll add a trigger similar to like what we did inside of LeadBrain and we'll search for webhook. So here you go, webhook. Click that, choose an event. We're gonna catch a hook, continue, test. And then here's your address right here. So instead of the one that we had here in LeadBrain, we're essentially replacing this with Zapier. So to be clear, you don't need both. You need one or the other. Uh, but this is for people who use maybe just like a Google Sheet or they just use like uh, the customer factor, for example, or some other CRM that may have an application built inside of Zapier. So you'll copy this and now inside of our homepage editor, instead of our lead brain destination, we would put our Z Zapier destination, right? And then we'd come in here. I'm not going to test it live, but we would submit a form. We would get the information. That information will be stored in here. And then we just have to map the fields to whatever we're doing. So let's say we were using the customer factor. We would tell Zapier, hey, what do we want to do after we catch this hook? You'll click on the action here. And then you'll search for customer. There you go, the customer factor. And then you'd come in here and you say, I want to create a customer. So with that information that I got from the webhook, I want to create a customer. And it's going to ask you to map the fields very similar to LeaderBrain. You come in here, you log in your customer factor, and you'll just create the customer. Now, let's say you used um, something like Google Sheets. So you can come in here. Google Sheets has an application. And you'd use that information to create a row or a column or whatever it is you want to do inside of Google Sheets. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you found this valuable. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll continue to make more tutorials like this. Hopefully it helps your business. I hope you have a great day. Goodbye.